Hello guys, how are you going? I'm Sam from Core Electronics and today we're going to be taking a look at how we can use NeoPixels with our particle device. Now, what is a NeoPixel? It's a good question. It comes up a lot and it's not uh, sort of well understood exactly what the word NeoPixel is referring to. Well, NeoPixel is Adafruit's brand word for their RGB addressable LEDs based on the WS2812 chip. So with traditional LEDs, there's a single uh, LED that you might be used to and it has two, two legs uh, and you apply power uh, across it, you give it a voltage uh, and the correct amount of current and it will light up, which is fantastic. But for ages, people have been using uh, RGB LEDs, so red, blue and green for their projects. Uh, and an RGB LED requires three pins to control you know, the three colors, which is fine. But if you're using lots of them in a project, you're gonna find that you're starting to use a ridiculous amount of pins. And it can get quite messy to control them because you've got all these different objects uh, you know, and definitions that you have to create for them. So we have these wonderful, wonderful, awesome devices called digitally addressable LEDs. Now these guys are just a standard surface mount uh, LED package in a 50-50 package. And there's actually a tiny little chip you probably can't see on there, but down, uh, down in the tutorial article, there's, uh, yeah, you can see a nice shot we got with the USB microscope. And there's a small chip on there with some really thin stranded wires going to each die of the LED. Uh, and it can light them up independently, which is great. And if you look at where those strands are, you can actually understand why it's important not to uh, give too much current to your LEDs because the electronics, the, uh, you know, the circuit pathways inside these devices are really small and fragile and they can only handle what they're rated for. So anyway, that's, a, that's an RGB LED and what it allows you to do is to send a simple uh, serial command, uh, in digital information, and the chip will take care of assigning the colors and what this means is that you can have a large string of LEDs, uh, you know, meters or a couple in a circle like we've got here, and you can control all of them from a single pin on your microcontroller, which is super, super cool. Now, it isn't without some downfalls though. With the NeoPixels, each pixel consumes some RAM. So because, uh, you know, in your pr uh, program, you're gonna, probably gonna be using a library for this and each uh, pixel object requires RAM to constantly be updating the colors on this. So that's a constraint. It also requires time to refresh all the pixels. Pretty much you will uh, send information to the first pixel in the chain and it will then pass it on to the next one, on to the next one and so on and so forth. And there's a certain protocol that requires very strict timing. So you won't be able to reliably control NeoPixels very well uh, certainly not a huge amount of them from a microprocessor based platforms, so things like your Raspberry Pi, uh, your Windows computer, you may be able to use them, but they're gonna be nowhere near as reliable as a microcontrol. And this is because the timing from them is really weird. It's kind of, uh, you know, very specific. It's not, uh, you know, it doesn't follow the bounds of say I2C or SPI or, you know, UART or something like that. But instead, you know, you need something that is capable of getting those exact timings, something that doesn't have to service an entire operating system like your, your Raspberry Pi or something like that. Um, but anyway, let's take a look at using them with our particle device. So I've got a photon here. You can use it with the electron as well. And I've got one of these shields, well, I say shields, uh, but it's for the particle photon and it is a NeoPixel ring kit which is very cool. Now don't confuse NeoPixel with the digitally addressable LEDs. That's just Adafruit's brand word. As we said, if you search for WS2812 LED, you'll find the, uh, you know, the, the standard package. But Adafruit has created this NeoPixel. They've created libraries for heaps of platforms uh, and created a brand around it, which is really cool. So I've got this ring kit, which contains 24 LEDs. It has uh, the power management built in. So most, um, of these LEDs are five volt devices. So I've got a standalone ring here, and this is a five volt device. So you'll see that I'm using a logic converter on the board. Uh, if I wanna use that with my Photon, because the Photon is a 3.3 volt device, check out our logic level conversion tutorial for more info on that. But uh, this one's great because it allows us to just plug in directly. It has a clip for uh, LiPo if you wanna power your project that way, which is very, very cool. So let's go ahead and plug this guy in. Now, if you're using the ring, uh, one of these rings, you will need to solder the wires uh, directly to it. But we're going to we're going to go through using both ways. 
plug that guy in nice and securely. Now, what we're gonna do is create a really simple code to control this. It's not very complicated at all. So go to uh, build, or actually just go to particle.io and go to the IDE to your build section. If you don't have an account, you'll need to log up and, uh, sorry, log in or sign up and create one. Um, and if you don't have a particle account or at this point you're not really sure what particle is, check out our other particle tutorials for really good understanding on that. So we are going to log in. Wait for it to take its sweet time. All right, here we go. Now I've got here somewhere. Cool. So we'll go down and I've created uh, some sort of bare bones code for the, the, to drive your NeoPixels. Now Adafruit has created libraries, um, ported them over to the Particle platform, which is really awesome. Go them, you guys are fantastic. So we've got this uh, skeleton code here, I guess, which contains all the setup and the library inclusion. So we can copy that over to here. And let's create a new app. I'm gonna call this whatever you want, really. NeoPixel test. Wow, seems logical. All right, copy that code in. And now even though we've added the include application, include uh, NeoPixel uh, libraries, we still actually need to go through and add them uh, with the library tab into our code. It doesn't actually know that you know that to go and search for it. It needs to pretty much include them in our project. And then that include function says, hey, I wanna use this library uh, in the app. So NeoPixel there. Straight up, very popular library. Is fantastic, include in app. And you'll know if it's uh, properly included in your app, if you've got the include, go back to a program, you've got the include line in your code. And where are we? Oh, I should have just clicked back to app. I have gone about this the wrong way. There we go. Ah. Oh. What have I done? Bear with me while I navigate this. Now, I am on the library. Now I have gone include in app. Now I want to select my app that I want to include it in. Now where has NeoPixel test gone? Let's go ahead and create the app again. I think I have completely clutched this up. Never fear. Let's go. Again, create new app. Uh, Neo Pixel Test. This is a good example to always concentrate on what you're doing. All right, we have our app. Fantastic. Now, libraries. Uh, Neo Pixels. All right, now include in app. We're going to select the app we want to include in. So NeoPixel test one. That's what you have named your particular program there. Uh, yeah, NeoPixel test one, add to this app. All right, cool. Now we can see in our NeoPixel test one that we have the file, uh, sorry, the included libraries NeoPixel in there, which is fantastic. Now, uh, go ahead, select all that code and just copy it, uh, copy it back in. So, fantastic, there we go. Now, there's three important bits of setup here. You can see some definitions. We've got pixel count, uh, pixel pin, and pixel type. Now, there's two different types of uh, NeoPixels, or the, you know, the chip controlling the NeoPixels. You've got the standard WS2812 chip, and you've got the WS2812B. Now they operate very, very similarly, but the timings on them are slightly different, which is why the library accounts for both types. So you do need to specify that. Now, if you go onto the product page, you can find uh, the type that it is. However, uh, on the back here, I can see it's, uh, I don't know if you can read that, but it does say WS2812 ring. Fantastic. So I wanna change that to 2812. Now we've got to select the pin, is the pin that you are driving your string of LEDs from. So it says uh, users D6. So 
digital pin six, fantastic. And it's got 24 pixels on it. So there we go, fantastic. So we're all set up. Then we've got to, uh, we create the object, which is uh, add a fruit near pixel and the object is called strip. And we've got in our setup, strip begin, which initializes the, uh, the near pixels uh, object, which is called strip. Uh, and show. Now, the way NeoPixels work is, I'll go back to the uh, some of the other code to show you. There's uh, there's two commands which are gonna be key to using NeoPixels. You've got uh, the object name, so in this case, strip dot uh, set pixel color. And from there you define the number, uh, the LED number that you want to uh, you know control. So you would start from zero index. So you start from zero, work your way around. So if you want to control pixel 10, you would put uh, number 10, you would put nine because it starts at zero. Uh, and then you would put your color in RGB format. So uh, you would put your color in there and then that sets the pixel color, but it doesn't actually update that color and display it on the LED. You need, need to use this command uh, strip or you know whatever your object is called strip dot show uh, and that is going to update and push any new color information to the LEDs so this is our bare bones code so if we go ahead and load this up I'll turn my uh, power my photon up now it won't do anything actually there may already be a neo pixel code on here but I don't think it's set up for this yeah so I've got it set up for uh, this ring here so a smaller number of LEDs but I'll go ahead and target our device. Find out which one is alive and breathing. Very good, Photon Derek. Now we're gonna flash to Photon Derek. Give it a moment to compile, fantastic. It's uploading, you can see that magenta LED. Very good. Even though we have plugged it in and we put our code on there, nothing is happening because we haven't uh, we haven't set any colors to any of the pixels. We've just initialized it using uh, begin and show commands. So we need to use the strip dot set oh, pixel color. Now remember to use the American spelling, so there's no U in color. And let's assign it to pixel number zero. So our first pixel in this in the strip using RGB color. Let's set it to a sort of half brightness white say I'll go 100, 100, uh, and then that isn't gonna do anything. We need to use strip.set, uh, strip.show, sorry. Now if we upload this, it's going to turn our first LED on uh, just to a nice gentle white, which will be fantastic. All right, so we are uploading our new code. Give it a moment to connect to the particle cloud. Now this is just gonna turn it on and do nothing. Essentially it's looping and turning on and on and on and on and on, which you know isn't very interesting. So we'll go through creating some animations. There we go, so it's just a nice, uh, well actually that's the one that's underneath the, uh, the USB cable there. So not a good example, but that is how you create color. Now that is sort of a bare bones code that you can use uh, for whatever, you know, for whatever you want. So we've got a, another, example there which sort of just delays uh, the set pixel color and then you can go through and add another line to turn it off if you like um, but let's 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 do, let's do something a bit more interesting so we'll go through and create uh, an animation so you can copy this code into your uh, into your file and we've already included the library so you can just copy the code straight in now what we're doing here is setting up everything as before make sure that's the right uh, pixel type and I've just gone through and defined some colors. So for peach, cyan, purple, blue, white, and green, I've created some RGB color uh, settings that you can use and created a function called spin, which is going to turn all the LEDs on. And then when it gets there, turn them all off again. So just a really simple animation effect, kind of cool. And it's gonna go through spin and it is passing a color to it. And it's going to use that color um, to to light, to light it up. So we'll go through sequentially and change all of those colors, which is pretty cool. Alrighty, so very simple, very simple, but let's go ahead and flash this. And you can see how I'm using strip.show after every uh, uh, set pixel color command because I want it to update continually in my for loop. So let's give this a moment. There we go. So peach, uh, cyan, purple, blue, white, and green, simple. And that is all there is to controlling NeoPixels. 
It's incredibly easy, and that is the NeoPixel Ring. And I've got this uh, this extra one set up here, as you saw before. Uh, works in the exact exact same way. Uh, in the documentation for this on the product page, it'll say that it is uh, a WS2812 chip as well, so you don't need to use the B. Uh, and there are 16 NeoPixels on it, and we've got our power, our ground, and our data pin. So we just connect our pin through our voltage, uh, sorry, our logic level converter. Um, and then connect it up to whatever pin you want. It can be driven from any digital pin, which is really cool. And that is using NeoPixels with Particle. It's incredibly easy, guys, so I encourage you to get some of these awesome uh, LEDs for your projects and get making. I'm Sam, I'll see you next time.